Hi, this is Chris with Stupid Raisins, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a time code in Final Cut Pro. Time code, that just, it sounds so sci-fi, like, he who controls the time code controls the universe. May the time code be with you. Mm. Where we're going, we don't need time codes. Now I'm gonna share with you how to show the timecode monitor and also how you can burn in a timecode into either your full project or into just specific clips. And finally, we're gonna look at a way to create a cool countdown using the timecode generator. Let's check that out. Okay, so we're here in Final Cut Pro. We're gonna take a look at some timecodes. First thing we're gonna pull up is the timecode viewer. So we're gonna scroll up to the top here and find window. We're gonna bring in the project timecode. Now what's great about this, this just gives you basically a larger version of this time code here. You got a couple different options with this. There's a little arrow that is, is barely, you're barely able to see it there, but you can actually change how transparent you want this to be. You can make it absolutely solid or you can go 50% and then you can resize this. So if you wanna keep it small and just off to the side, somewhere where you can see it, maybe a little more clear than this one. Or if you got somebody across the room, maybe a producer who's uh, viewing this with you and they need to see the time code, or if you're working across the room, you can enlarge in this and boom, you got that time code massive on the screen. This next one is the source time code. Let's pull that up. Now what this does is a little different. It still has the same options to the side where we can go 50%, 75 and solid, but then it lists out different uh, options here for what is viewed. So if you want to see the project time code, which is right up here, you can check that off. Then you've got the source time code, the time code of each one of these things here, and then the clip names, the clip roles. So you can highlight those, select what you want, the names we can take off. So this just shows in order down, right down this playhead, what each one of these is at. And again, we can resize this make it something easier to see so that as you go through the timeline, you'll see those time codes running. And based on where that playhead is at, it's gonna show different stuff. It's a great way to find if anything has accidentally been left disabled. You can go back in and see that uh, it'll be grayed out instead of be one of the colors. Another thing that's really cool about this window is you can actually right click on these and you can copy the time code. So let's say you wanna copy all of these time codes here because you just need to be able to see this and reference this in another document. We could pull in a note, all right, and we can paste those into this document. That way we have the name of the clip along with its time code. If you're working with producers or other departments, this is very helpful to have these things listed out and documented. All right, now we're gonna open up the effects browser. All right, effects, type in time, and yep, there's time code. Let's drop these on both of our clips, and we'll click on our clip Go up to the inspector window, make sure, on, make sure we're on video effects, and then the time code effects settings are right here. So we can check out um, right here the time code base. This is what this time code number is gonna be counting. Is it gonna be the project, or is it gonna be the source clip that we're currently selected? We can also choose to wh whether or not we wanna show the name of the project or the name of the clip. Then we have the format for the frames versus the hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Then we can change the font color. If we need this to show up a different color, we got that option here. And the fill color as well. Then we have the fill opacity, so we can make this a little less noticeable. We've got some offsets and, and centers. We can kind of move this around on the screen. And we can change the label. So say something like clip time code. And that will bake into that. So we've we changed everything in this one, but now the other source, we also need to edit that one. Now, if we wanna save ourselves some time, we can do Command C and then select this over here and do Shift Command V for pasting. So this will paste the attributes. You can actually choose to have this time code pasted over there. We can get rid of this original time code and boom, matches the time code next to it. Again, they're both set to the source. If we wanted it to be the project, we just click here and it will instead have the count of where it's at in the full timeline. All right, now we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna check out the generators. So let's bring the generators up, the generator browser. And here you might have started here on your library. You just click over here to the titles and generators. Then in here, we're gonna look also for timecode. Now this one, you can drag and drop right on top of everything. 
So we drop that right on top of everything. It gives us a time code right on top of our clips, our timeline. We can make all these adjustments. Now uh, we, we could set, keep it set to project where it'll just have a consistent time code, or we can set it to source, which will basically be the length of the time code as it appears here. So if it starts late, it'll actually be different from the, uh, the other setting. As you can see, the project time code is much different than the source time code. Time keeps on slipping into the future, and we make new videos like this all the time to help with your Final Cut Pro projects. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you can get notified when we release our next video. All right, now we're gonna try something much different with this time code. We are going to create a countdown. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna set this duration. So we're gonna right click and go to change duration, or we could simply do control D and we see this little number pop up here. So I'm gonna aim for it. Let's just do a three minute timer. I'm gonna do three minutes and one frame. So you enter the minute first, you enter the two digits for the seconds and then one digit for the final frame. And then we'll press enter. And then just so we can see what, what that did, we'll press shift Z, which will show us the whole timeline here. All right, so we're gonna set that to project and then we're gonna take out that additional label there. Before we do anything else, we're gonna put this into a compound clip. So we're gonna say new compound clip, I'm gonna call this countdown. And then we're gonna double click and make a couple more changes. So let's say we wanna do, we'll do that font, we'll increase the size. So we wanna line this up in the center with uh, just imagining that these uh, digits are not here as well as these digits back here. So we can change color and everything here, but uh, what we're simply gonna do is change the background color and we're gonna take that opacity all the way down. That way it's gonna show the background behind it. All right, so let's go back out of that compound clip. So it's not counting down yet, it's, it's just counting up. So we're gonna highlight this compound clip. We're gonna click on the retime editor, which is this speedometer looking icon over here. And then we'll click on reverse clip. Now that clip is now playing from three minutes down to zero seconds. And then what we're gonna do next is crop this in. So we'll take the left side, bring it all the way in just to there. The right side, same thing, but just to the edge of that. And then let's play that back. We'll disable that title so we can see what's going on here. And we have a countdown. If we need to move that around, we can bring up the transform tool and move this around if we wanted it to appear to the side. We can move it around just like it's a, a, a normal clip. We can even do some distortion. But yeah, so you can mess around with that. Once you've created that compound clip, that countdown is now baked into it and you can adjust and change that actual clip to anything you want on the main timeline. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check out this last generator and it's called counting. So we're gonna pull this in and I'm gonna drop it right at the end. Which looks like we need to allow that gap to form. And then here right at the end, we're gonna find the last 10 seconds. All right, so we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're actually gonna go up to 11. We're gonna cut right there. We're gonna drag this out to the edge. And then in this counting, uh, in these settings, so let's delete this. So in the counting settings, we're gonna change a few, a few options here. First thing is we're gonna say, we want this to start on 10 and go down to one. All right, so we got that set. Then we're gonna do something fun. There's an option here for the format where we can change it to spell out the number. So instead of the numbers, we now have the words spelled out for this countdown. So we can change a couple things on this just to make it awesome. Let's find that same font. All right, and that matches awesome there. So we're gonna go in and do one last thing to this just to make it a little more interesting. So we'll go to the beginning of the clip. On the scale, we're gonna hit a plus icon here. That is our keyframe. So that we just added a keyframe at the beginning of this clip. Now we're gonna go to the end and we are going to add a keyframe there. And then at the end, we're gonna scale this up to where we want it to end up. In fact, we want this to transform just a little bit right there. So now let's see what happens. Nice, so that text is now growing from 100% up to uh, what we had it set at the end there. So it turns out we can actually end that on zero, which is a cool, a, a neat thing there. 
3210. All right, so we've messed with time code. We've looked at how we can monitor our project with time code and also burn in a time code into our uh, source clips as well as our project as a whole. And we created a really fun countdown. And with that, we reached the end. Thanks for tagging along. Now that you spent time learning how to do time codes in Final Cut Pro, I've made another video about how to add slow motion in Final Cut Pro. Click here to check it out.